Hey everyone! Welcome to episode one of reading my most anticipated releases for this year. So I have three books that all came out 2023 that I own on my shelves and I thought that I would do a reading vlog, reading all three of these uh, with you all so that you could experience my first time reactions to these books. What I'm gonna do is talk about the three books we're gonna read together and I'm gonna try to guess which of these three books will be my least favorite and my favorite. So starting with Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, my copy, uh, the special edition came in from the Kickstarter that I backed last year, and I'm so excited to read this. I've heard nothing but the most amazing things about this book. I've heard it's lighthearted, I've heard it's fun, kind of inspired by The Princess Bride. Uh, so I think, this might be a worthy contender of a favorite for me. I also have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This one came in from my Fairy Loot subscription, and this one I have also heard nothing but good things about. It's apparently just an adorable, cozy fantasy following Emily Wilde as she has this kind of little like budding romance and is documenting different types of fairies and I have no idea what else but it sounds really cute and this is the most gorgeous edition oh my gosh I hope I love it because it's so pretty last one I have is the last tale of the flower bride by Roshani Chakshi which also came in the fairy loot box and is another one I am so excited for. I've never read any Roshani Chakshi. I have the entire Gilded Wolves trilogy that I really, really want to read, but this is her first adult fantasy debut, and I've heard it's very gothic mystery type fantasy, and just based on like the cover and the little summary, it just sounds so good. So I'm very curious how I like this author's writing. I've been wanting to check her out for a while now, so very excited to dive in. So these are the three books I'm going to be reading in this video. If I were to guess which ones I will like the most to the least, I would say I would, I'll probably enjoy Tress of the Emerald Sea the most. Uh, Sanderson is a writer I've read from before. He's written multiple of my favorite books of all time. I know I love his writing. I know I love his imaginative world building. And just based on all of the reviews I've seen from this, it sounds like this is going to be no different. I will probably love this. So I'm going to say Tress is going to be number one. But then number two, I'm going to say Emily Wilde because everybody said it's so adorable and cute and fun and whimsical. And it just sounds like this cozy good time. And I hope, hope, hope that that I also feel that same way uh, because this could be like just an ultimate feel-good book. Uh, so hopefully this ends up being number two, but then number three will be The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. The only reason being, and this one seems like it's going to read the least fantastical of the three, and sometimes with fantasy, if it reads more into magical realism rather than fantasy, I don't tend to love it as much. Same with this author's writing. I've heard great things, but I've never read from this author before. So kind of like Heather Fawcett, I haven't read from her either. Um, but I'm very curious to see how I like these two authors' writing styles. So I still think I'm going to really enjoy this. I just, maybe it'll be like my least favorite of the enjoyed books hopefully for this video. So uh, here is the order in which I think I'll enjoy the books. So without further ado, let's start reading some books and start off with Tress of the Emerald Sea. I started Tress of the Emerald Sea this morning and I am already on page 100. And for me, that is very quick. <laughs> <laughs> to read that many pages in one sitting. Uh, I, needless to say, am loving it. It feels like a Sanderson book still. It's got the really cool, unique world building 
that I've just come to love so much in Sanderson's stories. He always has the coolest ideas and I just think to myself, how does this man come up with these things? It is fascinating to me to see his imagination at work and I just adore it so much. This world has this really cool setting where you have these huge moons in the sky and you have these seas made of like alien dust that ships glide on. It's so cool. So I love the setting, but even more than that, I love that this story is told from Hoyd's point of view and he's our narrator because his voice is so distinct and so clever and witty. I adore it. I adore it. There were so many quotes where like my husband woke up this morning and I had to be like, sit down. I need to read you this quote. And I would just read him sentence after sentence that like made me chuckle or made me smile or made me go, oh my gosh, what a way to describe something. He just, it, Sanderson writing in Hoyd's voice might be my favorite thing ever. I, I love it so, so much. Uh, so I'm just so excited to keep going. Tress is the most precious little cinnamon roll of a character. I adore her. She's just, it's impossible not to like her. Oh, she has very simple plans for her life. She doesn't have big dreams or these big plans to adventure and travel the world. She really just wants this small, quaint, quiet little life. But when the boy she loves gets taken from her and gets put in this really horrible situation, she's like, I have to go save him. So she does everything that's like outside of her comfort zone, things that she never thought she would have to do. And she has to become this adventurer that she's really not. And it's just the cutest thing. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. So I'm, I'm loving this. I, I can't wait to keep updating you with more thoughts. finished dress. Five stars. Easy. So easy to give that five stars. It was really, really adorable. I loved, I, I feel like my thoughts, I didn't really update much more after that first update because my thoughts really remained the same throughout most of the story where I was just loving the cozy, fun tone of the book. And I loved the world building so much. The magic, you got a lot more of the mechanics of the magic system, which again, I love Sanderson for. I love when he plays with really creative, unique magic systems that you just can't believe he thought of. <laughs> so you get a lot of that great Sanderson magic. You get Hoyd, which is, I realized I didn't even explain who Hoyd was in my previous update. If you've never read a Sanderson book, Hoyd is a character that kind of connects all of the Cosmere novels together, this shared universe that Sanderson's creating. So Hoyd is kind of a, a character throughout each of these different stories, but he really plays a big role in this story particularly. And he's always kind of this mysterious character that's just passing through most often and leaves you with these nuggets of world building for the greater Cosmere, like little hidden Easter eggs, if you will. But I loved his role in this. I thought the humor for me, if you don't like Sanderson's humor, I don't know if you'll get bothered by some of the humor in this book because it does get a lot more 
kind of silly as you move through the the story, uh, especially since Hoyt himself is in a really interesting situation in this book. So there's a little bit of silliness that can make it read a little bit younger. But I think that for me it worked because I I think that this is a story that can appeal to such a broad audience and such a broad age range where it truly does feel like I know everybody says this, but I know this story is based on, it's inspired by <laughs> The Princess Bride. Sanderson thought of it while he was watching The Princess Bride with his family, and The Princess Bride is a movie that every age can get something out of, and that's what this feels like. Every age can enjoy this from a, a younger reader to an adult. <laughs> like uh, Anyone can enjoy this. There's something to love for everyone. So I loved the humor. I loved the journey that Tress went on. She had such a clear journey of like self-discovery and it was just so well done. And then the twist at the end, I, I did not see coming. I loved the twist at the end. And even with a story like this where the stakes, like the stakes are high, but it's not this huge epic fantasy world or war going on. So even with this story, the ending I was worried was going to feel a little anticlimactic because it had this lighter tone throughout. But he still did such a good job of adding in a little something special at the end that just kept the same tone of the book but didn't feel anticlimactic. Do you need to read other Cosmere books before you read this one? I think Elle, I saw that she reviewed this book and I will leave her review link down below. I think she said it best where if you haven't read any Cosmere book before, you can absolutely read this. If you've read the first book or the second book in the Mistborn Era 1 series and you have not finished out that series yet, I would wait to finish out that series because again, Elle says it best, but there is a slight mention of a character from that book where if you've never read those books, you won't notice it. But if you've read them, you'll pick up on the name and it might spoil something about the outcome of that character. So I just want to make sure that it's very clear if you've never read anything before this is a great place to start with Sanderson it's a fantastic standalone uh, fun light it definitely even though it's I think Sanderson's like lightest toned book it still has a lot of his trademarks like his magic system his great characters so you can still get a really good idea of what you're going to get if you read a Sanderson book I do think his writing style is the best it's been in this book, again, because of the, the narrator that we're being told the story from. His writing style is usually a little different in his other books. It's a little more straightforward. It's not as metaphorical. It's not as much as breaking the fourth wall with you and, and kind of being in on these jokes with you as the reader. Uh, that's not typically his writing style, but Again, I'm, I'm rambling now because I just loved it so much. It's so good. So five stars. This is a great start to reading my anticipated releases for this year. So hopefully the other books I read are just as good. I'm, I'm very hopeful. So we'll see. Okay, so I just started Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And I'm only 20 pages in, so I'm, I'm not very far. But my first impression is not great. I am not really liking this. <laughs> I'm very surprised. I really don't like the writing very much. Um, I'm, I'm like pretty bored. Like my eyes keep blazing over and I keep having to like reread the pages to like make sure I understood <laughs> what I just read. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually very surprised because I was expecting to like love this based off of all the reviews I've been seeing for it. But yeah, so far, not, not great. 
uh, I hope that changes. I'm gonna keep reading for sure. I'm gonna give it at least 100 pages maybe. I mean, we'll see. If I'm like still like really not feeling it, I may not give it a full 100 pages, but um, I'm gonna try to at the very least, give it 100 pages because of all of the hype it's been getting. So uh, yeah, let's hope that uh, <laughs> this starts getting a little bit better for me. I am 65 pages into Emily Wilde. I'm so sad. I'm so bored. I haven't been able to focus on this book like once while reading it I, my mind keeps wandering it just won't capture my attention I'm so surprised that everyone loves this book what is wrong with me <laughs> I'm just so sad I don't like any of the characters it feels like there's no plot and it goes on and on about these really mundane things. Like it'll talk about what Emily Wilde is cooking or eating or the laundry she's doing. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> why, why am I reading this? I'm so confused. Everyone loves this. What am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna give it 40 more pages. I'm gonna give it until page 100. And if I'm still feeling the way I feel, <sighs> this is gonna be what I'm just gonna have to put down. I'm so bummed and it's not long. So if I give it 100 pages, I'm giving it like almost a third of the book. <laughs> so. I feel like that's a fair shot. <sighs> so disappointed. I DNF'd it. I'm so shocked. Shocked. I got like 20 more pages in and was so frustrated about my lack of interest <laughs> because I thought I was gonna love this. I predicted this could be like a cozy little feel good favorite. <laughs> I tru I truly feel like I'm missing something because everyone loves this. And I looked up the Goodread rating and it's so high. And I'm like, what am I missing? I really could not have cared less about any of the characters. I didn't like Emily Wilde as a main character. I thought that the writing was very meandering and just very textbook there were footnotes that I was like oh after reading the first couple of footnotes I was like I'm not I'm not doing this uh it was just I'm just shocked I I just could not have cared less I'm so shocked and I'm so sad because this is the prettiest book oh <laughs> uh, what am I missing I feel like this is gonna be like so many people's favorite like it's gonna end up on like so many people's best of 2023. And I'm over here like, yeah, dear after. <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That just goes to show you that not every book is gonna be for every reader. And this one was not at all for me. So I'm I I can't not recommend this though. I mean, you have to still give it a try because I seem to be very much in the minority of people who were bored by this. I haven't heard anyone else say that. Um, if you have read this and you felt the same, please let me know because it will make me feel not so alone. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, I'm shocked. Uh, please check it out for yourself though, before you totally write it off because I may have just been missing something. So yeah, this is, this is the biggest shock I think of this video, unless the last tale of the flower bride also surprises me, but I think this will be the biggest shock. Um, yeah, so DNF'd uh, at less than 100 pages because I really, 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 really was uninterested. Yikes. Uh, all right, let's quickly move on to the next book. <laughs> so 
<laughs> that I don't fall into a reading slump from this one. All right, moving on to Last Tale of the Flower Bride. Okay, so I've started The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chakshi, and I am loving her writing. This particular paragraph just in fairy tales, a kiss marks a threshold between the state of being cursed or cured lies a kiss, but not all kisses cure, some kill. Thresholds go both ways after all. I wasn't thinking about this when Indigo drew me to her beneath the chandeliers of her Paris hotel. At the time, I wished only to trap her laughter under glass. I could not hear back then how uncannily triumphant the sound was. The writing is so pretty. It's so pretty. I really like this so far. I mean, I'm only like 14 pages in, <laughs> but I really like this so far. So yay. I'm, I'm glad I'm having better luck with this one. Thank goodness. I just read 80 pages of The Last Tale of the Flower Bride this morning. I'm obsessed. This is gorgeous. I love the writing. I love the gothic atmosphere. We've got like this gothic mansion in the story that's kind of becoming its own character. We've got a very mysterious main character with a, a hidden past and a point of view from that character's husband and a point of view from that character's childhood friend that mysteriously disappeared from this character's life when they were children. And I'm, I'm just so intrigued. I'm loving it. I'm loving the mystery. I'm loving the lush, writing. It's just, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So I'm, I'm so happy that this is working for me since Emily Wilde was unfortunately such a disappointment. This one is definitely exceeding my expectations so far. So, oh, I hope it stays good because this could be like a five-star book right now. Oh, I really, I hope it, I hope it ends up being five stars. That would be amazing. <laughs> so I just finished The Last Tale of the Flower Bride and my early updates, I was like obsessed. This could be five stars, maybe an all-time favorite. I will say that around like the halfway mark, I do think the story starts to get a little bit more abstract, a little bit more metaphorical and not quite as grounded. Not that the beginning was all that grounded, I guess, but it just becomes a little bit more abstract in its storytelling. And it, it I don't even want to say it lost me because I'll tell you what I rated this after, but it was like slightly, slightly less enjoyable. I wasn't like, oh my God, I'm so obsessed. That being said, I loved the ending. And overall, I still loved this. I still gave it four and a half stars. Uh, so it wasn't quite like that five star favorite that I thought it was going to be, but it was still magnificent. So the thing about this book is it is very much a sultry, it's very haunting. It's really not about the bride and groom as much as it is about our main character of Indigo and her childhood friend. And I really liked the focus of the story and th just the writing itself was so stunning. And I am usually not one that loves like very metaphorical, flowery, pretty writing. But something about Roshani Chakshi's descriptions in this book, like I read you that one quote, but there were so many others 
that I, I need to go back and reread this eventually so that I can tab all of the descriptions that just made me go, oh my God, I have to read that again because that was so beautiful. She had such a gorgeous, lush way of telling this story that added so much for me. And I just loved the mystery at the center of it. It Again, this is like a fantasy book that came in the Fairy Loot subscription box. I don't think that this read super fantastical. I think this read more magical realism than, than fantasy. I got cut off in my previous update because I had to rush and do something. Um, but what I was saying was it, it read a lot more magical realism than I was expecting. Uh, and I, I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing, right? There's a lot of people who like the magical realism subgenre of fantasy. Would you consider it a subgenre of fantasy? It it still like qualifies as fantasy, but it's it's not like that typical high fantasy set in another world or even low fantasy. It's very much that's not the focus of the story. It's not its world building. It's not these characters on a journey or a quest. It's like Truly, the, the fantastical elements were just almost like a metaphor for what was really happening with these characters and was used to explore themes of these characters' coming-of-age stories. So I don't... Yeah, I, it's fine that it came in a fantasy box. I'm so glad it did because I own it now and I love it. But it's not like a typical fantasy book. So if you like magical realism, I would highly recommend it. Uh, if you're looking for something fantasy, I don't know if you're going to get what you're expecting out of it. All this being said, it's actually been a couple days since I previously updated you, and I have not been able to stop thinking about this book. And every book I picked up after it, I just wanted to go back to reading that last tale of the Flower Bride. So I think that that means that I need to go back and give this five stars. It it will not leave my head. And the fact that I want to reread it so quickly, I don't have that feeling very often, if ever, with books where I immediately upon finishing something want to like reread it and tab it. But I loved Roshani Chakshi's writing so much that I've learned something new about myself as a reader from this book that I didn't think I like really appreciated that kind of writing, but in certain situations, maybe I do. Never knew that about myself. So the fact that this not only taught me a little bit more about myself and my reading tastes, but the fact that it just will not leave my mind and it made every book that came after it seem <laughs> less enjoyable five stars. So I, yeah, I loved this book. This will probably make my like best books list. It's so good, but I can see a lot of other people not loving it as much because it's a very like niche kind of book that if it speaks to you, you might feel the same way. But if it, if it doesn't, if it doesn't connect with you because of the writing or the story or the, you know, the fantasy, elements, then I can see why other people wouldn't love it as much. So this one's harder to recommend than something like Tress, which is, I think, more... It, it, Tress feels more like something that could be universally recommended since it feels more like that typical high fantasy uh, book that you look for in the genre. And this one is, is something a little different, but I loved it all the same. So, yay! I'm so glad that this ended up being the last book that I read and then I get to like leave this video on a high note. Oh, thank goodness. So, I mean, if any of what I just said about this book uh, makes you think you'll like it, please go, please go check it out. I can't wait to see what other people think okay, of it. let's wrap up this video. So, Starting with my my least favorite book, uh, I think we can all <laughs> guess, uh, Emily Wilde. Uh, yeah, this one, as I said before, just did not work for me at all. I DNF'd it 
at around 80, 85 pages in. Um, yeah, but everyone loves it except for me. So definitely <laughs> give it a read if you're looking for a cozy fantasy book because apparently it's great for that, just not for me. <laughs> So yeah, this is this is the biggest shock of this video for sure. Oh well. Okay, and then of my two five-star books of this video, Tress and Last Tale of the Flower Bride, how do I pick which one I like more? Tress, when I finished it, I was like easy five stars. This one, when I finished it, I was like 4.5 stars. But then after a couple of days of reflection, I was like, oh my God, I can't get it out of my head. Um, and I did not have that same experience with Tress, where I kept thinking about the book upon finishing it. So I think my my second favorite book is actually going to be Tress, and I'm shocked. Uh, I, I truly love both of these books. They'll probably both make my best books of the year list, but Tress just it didn't have as lasting of an impact on me, even though I loved it so much at the time, I can totally see myself rereading this. The fact that this one almost made it seem like I didn't wanna move on to another book right away because I just wanted to go back to this one. And the fact that I'm still thinking about it <laughs> so long afterwards, I learned something new about myself as a reader from this book. I never thought I'd, I liked magical realism until I read this book. So this one just with that impact, I got to I got to give it to the last tale of the flower bride. So I was totally wrong. <laughs> I didn't get one thing ranked correctly, but that is okay. Uh, because here's the final ranking. So I put all of those upside down, didn't I? Oops. Here's the final ranking. Uh, <laughs> I think I had it like totally different. Let me know if you've read any three of these books or if you've read any of your anticipated releases yet and what you're thinking of them. I would love to know, so leave those comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.